It was the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's first royal tour as a family, with Meghan and Archie joining Harry, who was returning to Southern Africa, a place that's always been close to his heart. A huge media pack had travelled with them on a tour that would end up defining their relationship with the press. The couple flew into Cape Town with a far from traditional start to their royal tour, arriving in the Nyanga Township, known as the murder capital of South Africa. The celebrations were laid on by those trying to tackle growing levels of violence against women and children, an issue the Duke and Duchess jointly addressed. Such a good one, your president said last week, no man is born to cause harm to women. This is learned behavior and a cycle that needs to be broken. May I just say that while I'm here with my husband, as a member of the royal family, I want you to know that for me, I am here with you as a mother, as a wife, as a woman, as a woman of color, and as your sister. <laughs> There was a side of Nyanga they were never going to see because of security fears and people they would never meet who shared their beliefs that future generations deserve better. When I grow up, I want to take care of my mom and build a house for her. Build a house for your mom. So that is why education is if I don't know, like... and it's the key to success. Yeah. Uh, if we can donate the uh, amount then ask for them, a uh, development project for, for building people to build houses and whatever, then the, the crime will, will go down. The Duke and Duchess toured the District 6 Museum to learn about the work to reunite members of the community who've been separated during the apartheid. We know they have huge respect for the late President Nelson Mandela. His granddaughter, Angelica, told us their willingness to speak out against inequality is vital. From repairing torn relationships from the past to preventing them in the future, Harry and Meghan met up with Waves for Change, an NGO giving young people mental health services through local surf mentors. In a joint interview, they told us it's an issue the world still needs to wake up to. What do you think is the most pressing global issue when it comes to dealing with the stigma around mental health, which still continues in so many places today? It's just getting people to talk, talk about it and talk to each other, right? And you see that no matter where you are in the world, if you're in a small community or a township, if you're in a big city, it's that everyone is dealing with a different version of the same thing globally. I think there's a bit of a consciousness crisis. And so the fact that we are able to be here together and see on the ground, so much good work that's being done, just because people are willing to talk to each other about it and someone's willing to listen, is huge. Everyone has experienced trauma or will likely experience trauma some, at some point during their lives. We need to try and not eradicate it, but learn from previous generations so that we don't, so that it's not a perpetual cycle. And I think what's amazing here is just in a day and a half, if that. <laughs> barely. Barely. <laughs> the, it's all well with. the same conversations keep happening with, with all sorts of different people. So. They've been through it and we can learn so much from them. Meghan hasn't given any interviews like this since they got engaged. They obviously appreciate the global impact they can have together, which is why they started the tour by talking about violence against women. It really peaked uh, in, the last, in the last month or so. We've done our best to try and keep track of what's been going on. But, you know, South Africa was, was always going to be, or well, this Africa tour was always going to be fantastic. We've been looking forward to coming to visit Cape Town, her first visit, I love this place. And again, meeting the people, the energy, the fun, again, the, posit the positivity, the optimism and the hope in, in the face of such incredible adversity. Of course, everyone was looking forward to meeting Archie Mountbatten Windsor, who at five months old didn't have any official royal engagements. But he was given the warmest of welcomes by Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who couldn't help but give him a kiss and seemed very taken with Meghan too. <laughs> but this was also a huge moment for the waiting cameras. The first time we'd seen Archie since they arrived in South Africa and his biggest photo call yet. He's great. Inside, there was a chance to talk about their shared desire to help young people, a passion that's only grown for Harry since becoming a dad. I think he knows exactly what's going on. I know. 
It might be their first family tour, but they wanted the focus to be on their work. Megan got straight back to it, visiting a charity called Mothers to Mothers that helps women living with HIV. Later in the tour, she'd explain just what her new role means to her. Well, the Commonwealth is a very diverse place, right, with 53 countries, and so being a part of this family and the platform that comes with that is an incredible responsibility that I take really seriously. I think for us it's just been a really special trip because you get to see when you're focusing on the causes that are really important to us, you can see that the impact is good and it feels meaningful. For Harry, it was time to leave the family behind in Cape Town with us following him. Four African countries, 5,000 miles in five days. Our first stop was Botswana and a tree planting like no other. This summer, he has been accused of preaching on environmental issues after using private jets. It didn't stop him from wanting to send a message to world leaders and give his backing to Greta Thunberg as he helped other children plant trees to bring the forest back to life in Chobe National Park. Science and facts that have been around for the last 30, maybe 40 years, and it's only getting stronger and stronger. <clears throat> I, don't, I, don't, I, I Genuinely, I don't understand how anyone in this world, whoever we are, you, us, children, leaders, whoever it is, no one can deny science, otherwise we live in a very, very troubling world. It is the wildlife that's kept him coming back to Botswana, and we joined him on an anti-poaching patrol. The pace of this part of the trip may be just as relentless when it comes to cramming in the engagements, but it certainly feels a world away from the media scrum that we saw in Cape Town. And it is a chance for Prince Harry to really focus on those causes that matter to him in a place that is so close to his heart. It is a country he admits has given him so much, especially following the death of Princess Diana. So I came here when I was 97, 98, uh, straight after my mum died. So it was a nice place to get away from it all. Um, but now I, I, I feel deeply connected to this place and to Africa. Our next destination was a sandy runway in Dirico in Angola, with a few problems with our landing. When you see that the wheels of our plane have got stuck in the sand, you realise that we are literally in the middle of nowhere. But this is what I wasn't expecting. If we turn around, you can see this huge crowd that's turned out just to see Prince Harry. And that is partly because of the legacy that his mother left behind. It's a country she visited in the year that she died to draw attention to the dangers of landmines. And they've never forgotten that. After a night camping, it was an early start as we made our way to a live minefield site. Quiet! Silence you! Firing! In charge of the detonator, it took just seconds, the explosion marking one less landmine in Angola. Prince Harry had come to see the painstaking work that goes on here to clear the thousands of mines left by the Civil War. As a boy in 1997, he would have seen pictures of his mother, Princess Diana, dressed in the same safety kit. A visit just months before she died that changed the way the world looked at landmines. A campaign now taken on by her son. Landmines are an unhealed scar of war. By clearing the landmines, we can help this community find peace, and with peace comes opportunity. Angola still has one of the world's highest levels of landmines, with 1,200 sites that still need demining. In a new project, £50 million is being spent by the Angolan government to clear two national parks, protecting local people, the wildlife and making it safe for tourists. This is just one of over 150 landmine sites they're trying to clear in this small part of Angola. And while it was important for Prince Harry to come here and acknowledge the important work that they're doing, it was never going to be the most poignant part of his journey. In the town of Huambo, he would make a moving visit to what's become known as Princess Diana Street. Now a busy road of houses, businesses and a school, it's here those pictures were taken of his mother in a minefield. Aurelio and Valdemar were his hosts. We were willing actually to meet Prince as part of the, 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 the process of minefields we have been doing in Huambo province. Yeah. My dream is to see this job finished and the sooner we do this the better.
In another reminder of his mother's visit, he met Sandra Tijica, who became known around the world when she met Diana 22 years ago. How has life been in the last 22 years? It's been nice. It's been nice. You, you still look as young as you did in those pictures all those years ago. <laughs> In a hospital named after her, he met with young patients who'd lost limbs. Her legacy, Prince Harry knows, won't be complete until every landmine is gone. As he fights another battle his mother also had to go through, the boundaries between royals and the press. As Harry was flying around southern Africa, Meghan had stayed back in Cape Town. And there was one very important visit she wanted to make. The photo on their Instagram account showing her leaving a ribbon of solidarity where a student was murdered last month. 19-year-old Yunini Umwetyana was raped and killed after going to collect a parcel. Her body was then dumped at the Kailisha township. Her death has led to protests across South Africa. This month, the president described the country as one of the most unsafe places in the world to be a woman. Zintla Olei was one of those who organized the demos and welcomes Megan's support. It's good um, for someone from, of, of that magnitude or um, people that are high profile to also help us um, um, in fighting this issue. I think it can't be an issue that um, one part of, of society fights, but it's something that we all need to come together in. As we flew on to Malawi, Harry was bringing with him his wife's feminist message. Visiting Nalakuli College, where a partnership between the UK and Malawi is helping girls to stay in school. They couldn't have been more excited to see Harry, who is a big supporter, but there was another guest on the line from Cape Town. We need far rather hear from the me, and hopefully if technology doesn't fail us, then you may see some of the to express how valuable and vital that work is. We're just incredibly proud to be a part of it. I wish I could be with you. We're here in South Africa right now. Aren't you taking a nap? <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you in spirit and I'm just I'm so happy and I can't wait to hear more. We are big sisters. Fatima Frank was one of the first in her community to go to secondary school. She's now a role model for others and training to be a teacher. I lost my both parents when I was nine. So it, it was difficult for my grandparents to pay me school fees. So Gandhi supported me. I was about to, to leave school and then they come in and supported me. Even though they are hundreds of miles apart, Harry and Meghan are still managing to make a connection together here in Malawi. It is a really natural style that seems to be playing so well during this tour. Women's rights is a relatively new cause for the prince, but we were heading for a place that he's been to many times before. A remote airstrip and a difficult landing for our pilots, all to get us into Liwonde National Park. As the president of the African parks, he's been here privately, and you can see why. In Malawi, poverty and the high international price of ivory is one of the reasons for poaching. But the British Army and local rangers are working to stop it in a project that Harry helped to set up. And it is working with no elephants or rhino killed here in the past five years. Speaking out so passionately means that Prince Harry has got his critics. I get accused of um, being happy for saying this, but I think now in today's world I think it's more acceptable, but everything is, is, is in balance. We're the only thing that's putting everything out of balance. It is, we are literally driving ourselves to extin extinction. All members of the patrol are maintaining their all-round defence. As we approached the last day of the tour, his views on how he and his wife have been treated became very clear. 
Harry. Rhiannon, I'm Prince Harry, just quickly, that short conversation, what yeah. do you hope to achieve through it? <laughs> That's good. Is that why it's important for you to come here and talk to them? Um, they behave like this. And then the Duke released this, announcing they were launching legal action against a UK paper. In his statement, he said, My wife has become one of the latest victims of a British tabloid press that wages campaigns against individuals with no thought to the consequences. A ruthless campaign that has escalated over the past year throughout her pregnancy and while raising our newborn son. He added... Though this action may not be the safe one, it is the right one, because my deepest fear is history repeating itself. I've seen what happens when someone I love is commoditized to the point where they're no longer treated or seen as a real person. I lost my mother, and now I watch my wife falling victim to the same powerful forces. The story they filed the complaint about, a letter written by Meghan to her father after he didn't attend their wedding. Today's statement is really unprecedented. We have seen strongly worded statements from this couple in the past, but I don't think we've ever had something quite so personal, quite such a personal attack on sections of the media. Clearly, Harry is absolutely furious about this. Prince Harry has spoken about the impact it had on him, watching his mother, Princess Diana, being pursued by the press. This time he isn't blaming photographers, but says for select media, this has become a game. Their visit to a township in Johannesburg to talk about youth unemployment was overshadowed by it all. He didn't talk about it publicly, but did say he'd always fight for what's right. We will firmly stand up for what we believe. We are fortunate enough to have a position that gives us amazing opportunities. And we will do everything that we can to play our part in building a better world. The timing of this statement is extraordinary when you think they've had such a successful tour and many saw this as an opportunity for them to turn things round after what has been a difficult summer of headlines. This isn't Prince Harry just taking on the Mail on Sunday. He is going into battle with a whole section of the UK press. His words had taken the attention away from the important diplomatic work expected of them, like meeting South Africa's president. We understand the Queen and Prince Charles had been told about it. Excuse me, can, we, can I just ask you what your thoughts are on Prince Harry's statement? <laughs> we don't know if they agreed with Harry's decision to publish his attack on the press. As the couple were meeting Nelson Mandela's widow, Grassa Michelle, we spoke to his granddaughter, Indilica, about the pressures of being part of a world-famous family. It also gives you a greater voice and a credibility because of where you come from. But the flip side of that is that it overshadows you. Because we have these iconic families, they tend to swallow you up alive that you can't have an opinion, even if you have an opinion, if it goes against the grain of what the family is saying, especially if you're a non-conformist like the Duke is and I am. And it, oftentimes you come at a collision course and say, oops, she shouldn't have said that because the grandfather wouldn't have said it. But forgetting that ultimately you're a human being, you are you. Parts of this 10-day trip have been a tour de force for the couple, a chance for Meghan in particular to shine. <laughs> Setting up a battle with the press may not have been the wisest way to finish it, even if they do feel under attack.